going over the time value of money. So the idea of the time value of money is that your money is worth more now than it is later because you have the opportunity to invest it. And if you look at the chart over here, the value of your money goes down over a period of time because you haven't invested it. So this involves four different calculations. The first is the future value of a single amount. The second is the present value of a single amount. The third is the future value of an annuity. And then the fourth is the present value of an annuity. Hi, my name is Sam Bidner, and today we're going to be discussing the future value of a single amount. The definition of the future value of a single amount can be simply described as how much one single investment will be worth in the future given a specific rate of return. When dealing with future value of a single amount, you need three things to perform your problem. The first thing you need is the original investment. How much are you going to put in to your original investment? That will be denoted as X. The second thing you need to know is your interest rate. How much do you expect to get back on your in initial investment? The last thing you, know, you need to know is the number of periods. How many times will your money be compounded? Now I said the word compounding. Now when I say compounding, I mean interest earned on top of interest. That means at the end of one period, the money you receive becomes the initial investment in the next period. It'll make more sense later. So when dealing with future value of a single amount, in one year, we're going to use this formula. And for one year, we're going to have our rate of return to be 7%, our number of periods to be one year, and our initial investment will be $5,000. So this plugging in, plug and replace, so we got X equals $5,000, rate of return is 7, 7%, you're going to convert it into a decimal over there, and then our periods will be one year. So just going straight, easy math, we have $5,000, initial investment, plus one, that's going to be your investment received back plus the money you're going to receive on your investment, plus the to the number of periods power. So now we have easy math, which would be $5,000 times 1.07, and that's going to be $5,350. So you're going to get back $350 on top of your initial $5,000 investment for your first year. So in our first year, we made $350 on top of our $5,000 initial investment. So next year, we're going to do the exact same thing this is where compounding comes into play. We're going to take our earnings from last year and make it our initial investment for the second year. So now our X is going to equal $5,350. Our rate of return stays the same, and our number of years stays the same because we're only going to do it for one year. So plugging it in, we're going to go $5,350 times our one. That's how much we're going to get back. We're expecting to get $5,350 back, or else it's a bad investment. And we're going to get 7% of the $5,350. So this Adding all together and then doing the exponent, we're going to get 5,350 times 1.7, and that's going to get you $5,724.50. So in our second year, in our first year, we got $5,350. In our second year, we got $5,724.50. So we found the amount that we're going to get after our first two years of investment using compounding interest. But what about our sixth year? So instead of doing the same long process for each year using the same first period, so we got first period, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth period, sixth period, we're going to use a formula down here. We're using our initial investment, rate of return, the number of periods is now going to be six years. So we're going to do 5,000 times our initial investment plus the rate of return to the sixth power. But instead of doing this whole math right here, we can refer to a table called the future value of a single amount table. So keep in mind our rate of return is 7%, so we're going to go to the 7% column and go down to the 6 period row. So at the intersection of the 6 period and the 7%, we're going to find 1.50073. So instead of doing all this complicated math, we look to the chart, we got our number 1.50073, we're multiplying it by our initial investment, and after 6 years, we're going to make $7,503.65. So our first year we found that, our second year we found that, and we can find our future value of a single amount in our sixth year using the formula or the table. What's going on guys? My name is Kenny Kinnon, and for our next topic we're going to be talking about the present value of a single amount. So what this is, is this is going to be how much you need to invest right now to get a certain amount in the future. So before you can solve for the present value, you're going to need three things. One thing you're going to need to know is the future value. So you need to know how much money you're going to want to be getting in the future. 
and then the next thing you need to know is the interest rate that it's going to be applied for those few years, and then you need to know the number of years, the number of periods that there's going to be interest applied for. Okay, so unlike when you're finding the future value, this time you're going to have a force called discounting interest, where this time your interest is going to be subtracting instead of adding to your amounts. So to find the present value, you're going to be you're going to find your future value divided by 1 plus your rate to the n power. So for this example, let's assume that we're trying to find out how much you need to invest one year ago to get $5,000. The interest rate is going to be 7%, which would be 0.07, and it's just for one year. So if we come over here, you take the 5,000 and you divide by 1 plus 0.07, so or to the 1 power since it's for one year, more simplified right there. And then you would get $4,672.90. So that means that today, you would have to put $4,672.90 into the bank to get $5,000 out. So that's for one year. But what if we want to get it for, like, say, the next six years or what it would be in six years? So there's a handy-dandy table that is way better than all this math that will help us out. So like before, we're going to find the intersection between the 7% interest rate and the 6 years to find 0.6663. After finding the intersection of the number of years, which is 6, and the interest, which is 7%, we get this number, the 0.663. So what we do is we take our future value and we multiply that by that 0.663. You're going to get $3,331.50. ,330 so that's the amount that if today we invested would give us $5,000 in the future. Before we move on to the next sections, it's important to know what an annuity is. So it's a, a series of consecutive payments characterized by these three items. An equal dollar amount each interest paid, interest periods of equal length, and an equal interest rate each interest period. Hi, my name is Brian Sharrock. Today I'm going to talk to you about a future value of an annuity. The future value of an annuity tells you how much money you will, be, you will have in an account at some point in the future. So for our example, we're going to use our $5,000 from earlier, multiplied by our 7% for our total time of 6 years. So how you do that is you use our $5,000 times the 7.15329, that's from our chart. That equals $35,766.45. So to find the number, you find the 7% and the 6 years, find the intersection of 7.15329. Hey, I'm Alfredo Perez, and today we'll be talking about the present value of an annuity. The present value of an annuity is the current value of amounts uh, to be received in the future. So to find the number, we find the intersection of 7% interest and 6 years, which comes out to four point. Seven six six five four. So if we take five thousand dollars by the number from the chart, which is a uh, four point seven six six five, we get a total of twenty three thousand eight hundred thirty two dollars and fifty cents, which is which is pretty much is saying that twenty three thousand dollars today would be worth uh, about thirty thousand dollars at the end of this period. 